Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to talk about some claims that I recently read on a blog post talking about how you should not be using a weight async in some scenarios and you should be using the synchronous version of that method instead. Now, a weight async is everywhere in .NET and we're taught that that's what you should be using, but it's true that there are some scenarios where sync should be chosen over async. But let's see if it is true for this specific scenario. So what I have here is a few projects, but this API is the main one. So I have an API over here that has some movies. You can create a movie, get a movie, get all movies, update and delete. That's not the important thing. The important thing or kind of the important thing is the model itself. So if I go over here, that's what the movie object has, an ID, a title and a year of release. All that, in my case, is stored on Docker through a real SQL Server database. The database is here and what I've done is I went and I populated this database with 100,000 records and I added a very, very long title because that's part of what the blog is talking about. And this title is an nvarchar max, so we can store the maximum amount of nvarchar as we can in this field. And in this case, I built this title field with up to 1000 random words. So we have 100,000 movies with a very, very long string in an nvarchar max field. Now the claim is the following. What I did, and in case you want to see what the cedar code looks like, here it is, I'm just using Bogus to generate a few random data and then just push them in. And what I'm going to show you to see the performance is the following. So I have a couple of methods using the app DB context one per execution. And what I'm doing here is I have a sync to list version. So not the to list async. I'm just selecting from all the records, the title, and then I'm just to listing it and I'm checking how long this operation took. Same thing here, but this time I'm using the to list async, which is what we know we should be using. You know, the guide does in general is you should be using await async everywhere. Now, this is also the advice we are giving on our anti framework course on Dome Train. And in fact, all of our courses until the 2nd of December are part of our Black Friday sale. So you can use discount code Black Friday 24 at checkout to get 40% off. But I want to see if this claim makes us basically have to change that course. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this code to see how the sync version and the async version compare. This will just read a very big data set with a lot of text in it. Okay, so 8.8 .8 seconds for this execution. And the async version, which many people would think is faster, will actually take, as you're going to see now, quite a bit longer, almost five more seconds more than the sync version. What gives? Why is this happening? Well, this is actually a pretty well documented issue with reading long strings from anti framework core. This is not the first time I see sync performing better than async. Now, that's a very niche use case. But here you see another scenario of this, but more in an inflated scenario. Obviously, we have a very long text. And would you have this long text in the database? You can. That's why there is a, a Stack Overflow bug race for this, because it can happen. But what I want to do is not just stop here and say, yeah, you should use sync over async every time when you have this use case, because that's not useful to you. What I want to do is I'm going to install a CLI tool called Ultra. Ultra is a new tool and it is one of my favorite new things that come out in the .NET ecosystem. It is made by Alexandre Mutel. Sorry for my French accent, but give it a start on GitHub. I'm going to put a link in the description. What will this allow you to do once you install it is the following. It's really, really cool, actually. So I'm going to go to the terminal and I'm going to install Ultra by saying .NET tool install G Ultra. It's globally accessible. I already have it installed, but I'm going to just reinstall it for you. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the exe of the application I want to profile, in this case, the thing that runs sort of my performance thing, and say Ultra profile double hyphen and then the location of the exe. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to let it run and it's going to run for a few seconds because it has to complete the full operation of the program. But once that's done, I'm going to show you what it will do for us. So the execution completed. Now it's saying merging ETL files. It's going to do some other really, really clever stuff. 
and then it's going to spit out a single file. As you can see, it's compiling all the symbols. And then we can take that file. And as the CLI tool instructs us, we can go to the profiler built in Firefox. So we can say profiler.firefox.com and we can load that file. I'm going to select the file, load it. And as you can see now, I have this very, very nice view of everything happening in my application while I was profiling. So immediately you can see here that on purple here, I have all the JIT compilation and I can see exactly how long JIT compilation is taken. And in case you don't know, JIT is the runtime compiler that takes whatever the .NET application has when it's starting and it compiles it even further to optimize it for future execution and so on. And then you have the execution of that first two list method that is so intense to my CPU, you know, peaking at 100% and collecting all that memory. And then we have the two list async, which seems to be happening in three .NET TP workers. So it's a bit of a split situation between one, two, and three. I'm assuming those are threads. Now that all looks fine. And you know, you probably assume that since we're spreading the load here, this should perform faster than this. But look at the GC unlock here. We have what seems to be way more allocations. And actually, if we go into the GitHub issue for this problem, which is this one over here, by the way, it is raised. It is, it's been like four years, almost five years that this has been around. You can see that the sync version in some cases, not only is it significantly faster, but the async version has a big memory issue, like a big one. Okay, here is a smaller one. So it looks like memory plays a big part as to why this is happening. Now, that being said, this is a bit of a niche use case. It doesn't affect everyone, but it might affect you. So to answer the question, should you be using sync over async? Well, I don't know, because even if this is slow and it has a big issue with memory, this is clearly like a problem that needs to be fixed. But even if you don't use sync over async, async code will scale better than sync code. The CPU being like painted 100% here means that thread is doing nothing else while we're using await async. That thread will go do something else while it's waiting on the database, then come back and your application will just scale better. So what is my answer? Well, I think the bug should be fixed or if it's supposed to be this way, then maybe decide if it makes sense for you to have a faster execution that potentially scales worse or have something that scales better, but it's not as fast. It's completely up to you. So I want to know your thoughts. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about all this. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.